Well, let's get more now on this from Daniel Levy. He's the president of the US Middle East Project and is a former Israeli negotiator. Daniel, good to talk to you. Uh, we've seen, obviously, things are starting to escalate. There's a potential, a strong potential, of a ground offensive by Israel. Uh, what are your thoughts on where we're headed now? Well, thank you, Mariam. <clears throat> the I wouldn't get too uh, uh, focused on ground offensive, yes or no. One imagines that will come in time, but the, the destruction and devastation we're already seeing uh, in Gaza is, is quite enough to, I hope, shake the complacency uh, that we've seen from uh, the West in terms of giving Israel carte blanche to conduct what looked like premeditated war crimes. Now, the appalling images uh, and, and casualties on the Israeli side, what was done over the weekend, that's a war crime. But heaping one on top of the other, that's the, that's the appalling thing about war. And that's why it should be avoided. But war also is conducted according to international law. And that line needs to be drawn very, very clearly. But what we've seen is an absolute willingness to tell Israel on the part of its allies, do your worst. And that is going to lead to a further escalation. And the painful thing is that the failure of politics to offer a different way over the last 10, 15, 30 all these decades of occupation is now being compounded in, in ways that we're seeing hourly on your screen. But the Israelis would say, well, look, you know, we are defending ourselves. We are targeting <coughs> Hamas targets in Gaza. We are trying to put an end uh, to what we believe is a terrorist organization once and for all. Do you really keep a straight face when you say that? Do you think terrorist organizations embedded in populations who are denied their most basic rights are ended once and for all in a military campaign. Does that happen in history? Can someone credibly tell me that when the leadership of a country says, we are cutting off food, electricity, water, all supplies to an entire civilian population, that they're targeting militants? I'm sorry, these kind of lies can't be allowed to pass. And when you tell yourself the lie, it leads to the wrong policy. If anyone told me, that what the militants did on the weekend was a legitimate response to years and years of occupation, I would say, no, you're wrong-headed. You've lost sight of humanity and reality. And if anyone tells me that what Israel is doing in Gaza today is a legitimate response to what happened on the weekend, it's exactly the same. And yet they are saying it, and yet the international community is yes, saying and that. Yes, and people need to challenge them on it, because it's a lie, and we're warmongering if we allow them to get away with it. So what should Israel do? What, what would you be advising them to do right now instead of <clears throat> doing what they're doing, instead of sending air missiles into Gaza, instead of amassing troops on the Gazan border? What should they be doing? Well, you know the old adage, don't you? If, if, if I was trying to get there, I wouldn't start here. And if I was trying to get to security for Israelis and Palestinians, if I was trying to actually reach peace, then I wouldn't start, not from where we were, well, not from where we are right now, not from where we were six o'clock Saturday morning. Because every opportunity of quiet, and let's, let's just be very clear, that Israel has, has had this kind of relationship with Hamas in the decade and a half that Hamas has controlled the Gaza Strip. And there have been periods of agreed ceasefires and there have been periods of greater calm and there have been periods of escalation. But whenever there was a calm, one didn't look neither to a, a, a political package with Hamas nor to a political package with the other side of the Palestinian political divide who've recognized Israel, uh, given up armed struggle, come to the negotiating table, pursued that route. <clears throat> On neither front was the approach taken that let's come back to adhering to international law, let's address the root causes, let's address the fact that while life is normal for Israelis most days, life is always abnormal for Palestinians under occupation, and let's actually deal with Palestinians getting their rights. And Israel has, been not, has not been held to account in avoiding that and in breaking international law every day with its settlements and, and with the way it manages that occupation. So you have to get 
to those root causes. That's not going to happen today. I'm not that naive. But that's what we have to try. Daniel, and but the Israelis will say to you that how can we <clears throat> sit down and talk to uh, an organization like Hamas who deny our, our own existence? Can I ask you something? Are we in a better position in Ireland today? Did people used to say, how could we possibly sit down with the people who bombed the Tory party conference? You sit down with those people. Hamas is a political movement that does terrible things. But that's precisely who you need to negotiate with because they also do politics. And unlike Daesh, they are embedded. Unlike ISIS, they are embedded in their community. And you need to bring in those people. And you can. And the Israeli security establishment knows that you can. They're lying. They know that you can deal with them. But they don't want to because they want to continue to occupy the Palestinians and to deny them their rights. And until that fundamental question is addressed, nobody there will have security. Daniel, and that's Le devastating. Daniel Levy, former Israeli negotiator, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to speak to us today on BBC News. I thank you.